the one on top. Not to mention, I had some infantry behind the sandbags who picked off another guy. So um, at this point, I'm just like um, I'm being a little cautious. I don't want to lose my Panzer IV, but I'm pretty confident about holding this thing off and hunting down that half track is my plan now because I don't want that half track driving around. And I managed to kill some SAS, so that was like a special air service thing. And boom, half track, whole damage. I don't know what whole damage means, um, but I I, th I think it's kind of like whole crushed. Basically, it's hurt now and I can't do anything until I repair it. And yeah, so I'm taking back that left. We have the right, and soon our points are going to take up. They have 24 and we have 2, but uh, we can start taking things back. So here's how you fight on this map. If you don't have the middle point, you just ignore the middle. You let them take the middle, sink all their Orlikon 20 millimeters and heavy Vickers machine guns into the middle, and uh, run around the sides. So I'm going to reveal who won the last game. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it. Um, I'll look at the Cromwell. Um, they won the last game. We got our butts kicked, in fact. So um, this is a rematch, and you may think we're going to get our butts kicked again. And the idea is, can we stop our butts from getting kicked again um, on the exact same map with the exact same teams? Oh, no, don't drive so close. <laughs> that was extremely close. That guy, is <laughs> Lollabo drove so close to that guy that when he threw his AT grenade, it impacted on the side of the tank and killed him and took out the Lollabo's track. So Lollabo got extremely lucky. Should really have waited for my men to move forward, but... Um, on the plus side, Lollibo did knock out that Cromwell. Um, so that's really, really good. Um, so I'm moving forward and setting up a bulwark to defend Lollibo's tank because he's like, Oh shit, my track is gone! Please save me! Please save me! There's infantry crawling towards me! Um, oh, and if you want to hear that, you can... Uh, once again, I'll try and put the... I recorded both of us on vent, which is why there's no game sound, by the way, sorry. Um, but I'll try and host that somewhere, and then you can download it. And it doesn't matter, because this 17-pounder was set up basically in their spawn, and it took out our Panzer IV. So that was a noble goal um, to try and protect Lollibo's thing, but it didn't happen. And now my men are taking heavy machine gun fire, and they really shouldn't even be building these sandbags. I should just be retreating to the point, maybe building some sandbags on the point. But um, I'm nothing if not aggressive. I'm also skinny. Um, even if I weren't aggressive, I would be skinny, but, um, yeah, I, whatever, set up some stuff, get behind those sandbags, stay down, and really overkill, um, takes out that Panzer IV. In fact, um, if that Panzer IV was just mostly dead instead of all the way dead, he probably could have captured that. Um, instead of firing with his 17-pounder, he probably could have just waltzed up there and captured that at some point. Um, I was setting up some sandbags here, but then I realized, no. Don't I realize no? I think I'm about to realize no. Yeah, I realize no, because it's on the other side of a hill, basically. There's not really a good point to put sandbags there. Like, you're going to be firing upwards no matter what. People are going to be firing down at you from the top of that hill. It's not really a fantastic place for sandbags. Obviously, they're better than nothing, but I figure, you know, my men can better be served than just chilling on the other side of the hill. Because the thing is, if you're on the, if you're on one slope of a hill, if you're on, like, the down slope of a hill, and people are coming up the other side of the hill, you're not going to be able to fire them until they crest the hill. And by the time they crest the hill, they're really close to you. And so the whole point of setting up these sandbag defensive positions, which is to fire at people from a long way away while they charge towards you and get mowed down, really doesn't work because they get, like, 90% of the work done for them simply by having the hill um, protect them while they crawl up the side of the hill. So um, the best defensive position, of course, on a hill is at the very top, and then you set up some sandbags and you can fire downwards at people coming up the hill. And it is cool beans, and you can throw grenades down at them and roll things down at them, and even if you die, all your explosives will just roll the bottom of the hill and explode, and that doesn't really happen, although in Men of War it can happen if you take all the shells out of a tank or something, all the explosive shells out of a high, high explosive artillery piece, and you drop them on the ground, they'll be affected by physics and roll the ground, and then they'll roll to the bottom, and then you can hit them with a grenade, and they'll explode, and that's pretty fun, but really not worth all the trouble when you can just throw a grenade in the first place. And um, also friction is pretty big in this game. Like a tiny slope, it's not going to roll the bottom of a tiny slope the way it would in like Half-Life 2 or something with a physics engine. Anyways, Lollibo bought a giant artillery piece. Isn't that fun? And it reaches all the way to their back flag, which is, I believe I commented on an event because that's pretty amusing. Um, and oh no, it's a tank. What am I going to do? Well, I have a tank, don't I? Yeah, let's let's shoot at that. Let's shoot at that. Come on, guys. Come on. Everybody, wake up. Hey, hey, what are you shooting at? I don't, I'm not interested in that. Come on. Come on. Let's shoot the tank. Let's do it. Um, yeah, I don't know what that fucking... He's mesmerized by the guy by the church. And I'm like, there is a tank. That is clearly what you should be doing. And he's like, no, I want to shoot the guy at the church. And I'm like, no, there's a tank. What are you doing? What are you doing? Look over there. What, what, what are you doing? Okay, yeah, shoot. No, don't look over the right... God damn it. 
<sighs> and so two people die because of that. Uh, finally, he gets the memo and, of course, fires once and gets owned. One guy left in that thing. I'm like, yeah, hop out of that tank and repair it before another armor-piercing shell goes through and you're dead. Um, God damn that guy in the church. What a piece of shit. Um, looks like he's finally going to die. Um, God damn it. He almost killed my machine gunner. Come on, so he's eating a grenade is what he's going to do. I don't know where he's hiding. I don't know what you call those architectural features. Maybe those are, I don't know, maybe those are flying buttresses. Everything on a church is a flying buttress. But, um, yeah, he's finally dead. No, yes, yes, he's finally dead. Um, what, oh yeah, artillery, er, Lollibo's big honking artillery piece is hopefully going to be shelling our opponents for a while and taking out those entrenched positions they have in the middle. And that is what Lollibo is busy with while I am defending on the left. And meanwhile, they have taken back that point on the right quite a while ago, so they are at 32 points versus R13. Really not fantastic. And so that Comet is still busy destroying my Panzer IV. It's pierced the hole a few times, but since there's nobody in there anymore, it's mostly just making holes. It's turning it into Swiss cheese, but unless it hits the engine or the ammo magazine, nothing's going to happen, and that's really exciting. Um, that's one of my favorite parts of Batman War, and surprisingly, um, hasn't done much damage at all until now when he destroys it, but um, that tank was almost fixed. So that's cool. Um... I was trying to sneak up on this guy and throw maybe throw an AT grenade, but once he's knocked out my Panzer IV, he does the smart thing and pulls out, and then he does the dumb thing and starts driving towards the middle. I guess we can't really blame him for this, because he can't really know that I have infantry hidden in these bushes. He can assume it, you can always assume it, um, but making but making assumptions makes an ass out of you and me, so um, no, it doesn't. That's a bad saying. Assumptions are very, very good things, as long as they are warranted assumptions, or as long as they are useful assumptions to make, given the circumstances, and it is always a good idea to assume your opponent has infantry in every fucking bush, because otherwise this sort of shit happens, and you're not ready for it. Look, that's dead. The engine is damaged, but it's on fire, so that tank is going to explode. Um, yeah, like, always be cautious. Always assume there's people in every bush, especially if you're past the halfway point into enemy territory, which I guess technically that wasn't. That was closer to them than it was to me, but yes, one goddamn man in a bush can ruin your day uh, so what do you do to prevent that just always support your tanks with infantry or at the very least be super paranoid and stay away from bushes um that guy's sobbing over his repair kit it looks like on the ground um yeah so always be cautious and meanwhile lollibo has made fantastic progress in the middle and is taking that point back thanks to his giant artillery piece and um infantry um, attack. And if you had downloaded the version of this game where you heard Lollibo and me talking, you would have heard some weird Ventrilo stuff. Um, sometimes Ventrilo does this weird thing where it holds your conversation for like five minutes and then you hear what they said like five minutes ago, so it's really bizarre. And so there's that 17-pounder a while ago. Um, these people, why am I, oh yeah, I sent these people to the right to attack those people attacking us on the right. So yeah, it's uh, it was a firefight and he had fewer people, so um, he's going to lose eventually. Um, has he killed any of my guys yet? No. But he got really close to killing... Oh, yeah, he killed one of my guys, and he got really close to killing another. And so, to the victor go the spoils, and in this case, spoils are a grenade and a medkit, and maybe some sandbags, because why not? Oh, and a hat. Because <laughs> my hat got knocked off, so let's take a helmet. Don't joke around with helmets, man. They actually work. If you get hit in the head, it'll knock your helmet off 90% of the time, but otherwise, it's like an instant kill, basically. It's, um... Men of War is a very detailed game, and it's totally worth it to pick up helmets. Plus, it's really amusing when you pick up opponents' helmets and you're walking around with their helmets. Um, it's just, it looks funny. Oh, Men of War, you're such a wonderful game. I remember playing the demo for Soldiers Heroes of World War II way back in whatever year it was, and I was, like, blown away at the detail. And it's just, the, pretty much no game has come close to that sort of detail, except for, of course, Men of War since then. It's just, it's really amazing what uh, the commitment to detail that these guys have. Um, but yeah, here's a lot of those giant artillery piece. I'm telling him, shoot the tank, shoot the tank, shoot the tank, and I don't know. He's got some sort of excuse for why he's not shooting the tank. I think it's out of range or something. Um, yeah, but that's a pretty cool artillery piece that Lollibo's got. It's uh, it's given us the ability to take the middle, and now we have 22 points versus their 37, and we have 71 minutes to win this thing. We don't want to win or lose twice in a row, because that would be like losing once in a row, twice. And they're still making a good push on the middle, but it's not happening. I don't know what killed that thing on the left. I think it was Lollibo's artillery or something. I can't remember. Um, hopefully you were watching the death messages, and you can find out. Um, but that half-track... Oh, no, that half-track's been dead for a while, hasn't it? 